P-O-S-T. P-O-S-T. Post. The serials you like the most brings you the Roy Rogers Show, starring the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. It's roundup time on the double R bar. So saddle your horse, cause we're gonna ride far. The double R bar ranch transcribes stories and songs of the real West with the Whippoorwills. The wisest trail scout of them all, Jonah Wilde, played by Forrest Lewis. The Queen of the West, Dale Evans. And in person, the King of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers. Well, howdy, folks. This is Roy Rogers. Tomorrow morning, you'll want a good-tasting breakfast that you can fix quick and will fill you with energy. Isn't that right, buckaroos? You bet. And you'll know just where to get it, too, won't you? Right off of the shelf where Mom keeps those good Post cereals. You can always count on anything bearing the brand name Post. Well, we've got some good news here in Paradise Valley. The sheriff is expecting some important evidence in the Rene Egan case to arrive soon. A crook who isn't smart gets caught right away, Dale. But one who is, well, it takes a little longer, that's all. Well, the law gets them all sooner or later, even Rene Egan. Rene was like the rest. He lost his fear of the law and shot a man. Now he's in jail. How about evidence, though? I heard he might go free. Nope. The man he shot wrote out a statement before he died. It identifies Egan beyond all doubt. Well, that's good. The marshal of Cow Valley is bringing it over today. Probably be here late this afternoon. Then all you'll have to do is round up Egan's gang. Say, how about some dessert? Well, I shouldn't. Always eat more when I don't get my usual amount of sleep. Hey, is the sheriff here? Somebody said he was... Right here. here. Yeah, there's a fellow laying alongside the trail out by Campfire Peak. He may be dead. Huh? Know who it is? No, sir. I'm a stranger to this territory. All right. I'll go on out. You want any help, Sheriff? Uh, no, thanks. You'd better come along, though. Me? Well, I had some things to do. You'll I have to do them later. I want you with me. And if this is anything serious, you'll have to file a report. Tell Roy I'll see him later, Dale. You bet. My horse is at the hitching rail right down the street. Uh, uh, you go ahead. Uh, I'll meet you there. Uh, I want to get some smokes before I do any more riding. All right, but hurry. This can't wait. The tough, wiry stranger darts into a doorway, watches intently to be sure the sheriff will not look back, then races out in between two buildings into the alley. Another man is there. Matt, I found the sheriff. He insists I ride out there with him. Yeah, go ahead. Stall a little so I can get there ahead of you. This is our only chance. We can't miss on it. Oh, oh, oh. Right here, you see? Yeah. He was lying just the other side of the big oak. Oh, yeah. I see him. Lying there this long, I'm afraid he's more than just hurt. The sheriff and his companion walk to the oak tree and stop. The sheriff bends over the figure which lies face to the ground. He starts to turn it over carefully, and then... A man is dropped from the tree, landed directly on the sheriff's back. They go down. The sheriff's companion joins in the fight, but against the sheriff. Get the rope so he can tie up the sheriff. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll take his badge and hurry it up. We're already late. Matt, I wonder if Renee appreciates having us in his gang. Oh, so why not? Well, it's us that found out the Cow Valley Marshal is sending his cousin with that dead hombre statement... It's us that's waiting here to... Look, it's because of me the marshal is sending his cousin instead of coming with it himself. You? Sure. I got a friend to throw a scare into the marshal. Told him Egan's gang would be watching. He better send the statement with a stranger. The only stranger he felt he could trust with such an important paper was a cousin who was visiting him. Fella named Noble. Yeah, you done that, and all the while Renee's sitting in jail. What are you talking this way for? What way? Well, you sound as if you wanted to make trouble in the gang. Oh, no, no, I'm satisfied. Uh, you better be. Yeah, here he comes, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's the marshal's cousin, all right. 
Now, take it easy now. I hear he knows how to use a gun. If it hadn't been for that, we wouldn't have to bother taking the sheriff's badge. Yeah, yeah, easy. There's no use getting ourselves killed. Sorry to stuff you this way, Mr. Noble. Yeah, put your gun away. It's all right. We represent the law. Here's my badge, Mr. Noble. Sheriff, Paradise Valley. Well, that's it. And we got word Egan's gang is waiting for you up the point. So we decided to come out and get the paper before you got that far. Yeah? Well, all right, here it is. Better sign the receipt. Sure. You want me to ride in with you in case of trouble? No, thanks, Mr. Noel. We'll take a side trail. No danger there. The two members of the Rene Egan's gang ride away with a murdered man's statement, the only evidence that will convict their chief of murder. Some three hours later, the sheriff stumbles into Dale's restaurant. Roy! Well, howdy, Sheriff. We've been waiting for it. Well, what in the world happened to you? Dale, that man who called me when I was here. Yeah? He led me into an ambush. The body was a dummy. He and a partner jumped me, took my badge, and left me there. Roped. <laughs> oh, ain't that a shame. Well, let me in on this, Sheriff. Uh, I beg your pardon. Uh, did I hear you people address this man as a sheriff? You sure did. Not the sheriff of Paradise Valley, I hope. Why do you hope? Well, if you are, I've just pulled the prize boner of all time. I'm Bob Noble, Cow Valley Marshal's cousin. He sent me down here to deliver some papers, uh, evidence against some outlaw. Rene Egan? Yeah. On the way, I met two men. One of them showed me a badge, said he was the sheriff of Paradise Valley. They took the papers. Is that it? I gave them to them. Afterwards, I got to doubt in their identity and decided to hey, ride Jonah, on. And... Go get Bullet. Convolutions. Mr. Noble, ride out with us to where you met those men. I'll be happy to. Bullet will trail them from there and we'll take them. <laughs> All right, Mr. Noble, thanks. Bullet's got their trail. Don't you want me with you? No, oh, I'd rather you went back to town. Identify them when we bring them in. I'll sure do that. All right. Bullet's on the trail. Let's go. Bullet's not having any trouble with this trail. The trail's there. Bullet will find it. We're getting off the deep end of the mountain, Troy. They may have gone straight to the gang's hideout. That's okay with me. I'd sure like a chance to bag Renee Egan's whole outfit. What's wrong, Roy? Oh, nothing. Just playing a hunch. Where are you going? Thought I'd take a look over this ridge here before we ride down. Yeah. Oh, see, see anything? Look before you leave. Yeah, we're on the right trail. All right, doggies, we ought to get this finished up fast now. Yeah, you're a fine fellow, Bullet. Sheriff, you and Noble both said one of the outlaws rode a chestnut horse. And the other a bay. Well, there's a chestnut and a bay tied behind the cabin in the hollow. Good enough, but... That doesn't sound like the whole gang. Suppose you head back and pick up a posse right away. Me? We ought to have a posse on the way here when they tell where the rest of the gang's hiding out. Dale, Jonah, we'll start moving in. This is good for now. We're getting right up on them. We'll watch for a minute to make sure we don't walk into more than we bargained for. Hey, keep behind these boulders. Yeah. Don't nobody seem to be around. Nobody outside. Uh, say, Roy, while we're stopped, I want to compliment you on the smooth way you got rid of old Tin Star. Well, I didn't get rid of him, Jonah. We'll need a posse. A quiet bullet. Yeah, old Tin Star treats me as if I was slagging stubble. Can't we move up more, Roy? Well, let's be sure. Well, anyhow, I don't run out in the darn street wearing nothing but a bath towel. <laughs> hey, bullet senses trouble, Dale. Yeah, sure sounds like it. A feller like him ought to know better than to doze off when he's taking a bath, that right it. What are you mumbling about, Jonah? Well, Dale, that tin star. Yesterday he dozed off in his big old tin bathtub and somebody stuck their head in his window and yelled fire. (laughs) 
Yeah, and he ups and wraps a towel around him and heads for the street, a bend at the top of his lungs. And it happened just as school was out, and he was making 35 miles an hour on his big old bare feet when he runs smack dab into Dorothy May. Oh, <laughs> the poor fellow. Yeah, you poor fellow or nothing. Say, poor fellow or nothing, he holds grudges. And I suppose you teased him. Oh, shucks, no, Dale. I didn't have nothing to do with it. Except at the beginning, I was the one that poked my head in the window and yelled, Fire! <laughs> quiet, Bullet. Jonah Wild, you are... Roy, look. Quiet, quiet. Where'd that boy come from? The cabin. Convolutions. The last thing in the world I expected to find around here was a boy carrying a pail. He must be heading for a spring to get water. Easy, Bullet. Well, we can't put the boy in danger. Roy... Maybe we followed the wrong trail. We'll cut around and meet him at the spring. Leave the horses where they are. Hi, son. Hi. Well, it's all right. There's nothing to worry about. We won't hurt you. Max! Jill! Come hey, on! Cut it out! What's the matter with you? Here, here, close your pie, Bill. Oh, that's all right, Jonah. You're not taking them. Not as long as I'm around. All right, doggies, I ought to turn you bottom side up. And... You hear that? Matt and Shell have singled the rest of the gang. The rest of the gang will be here. Dale, take him back to our horses. Ride to the other side of the ridge where you'll be safe. Oh, no. I'm not going anywhere. Yes, you are. If he tries anything funny, Dale, you know what to do. I can handle him, Roy. See? The gang's answering Matt and Shell. Go ahead, Dale. Jonah, we'll crash that cabin with Bullet and grab the two in there. You betcha. Maybe we can hold the others off until the posse comes. <laughs> Say, how about letting the Indians be your guide to heap good eating? Rich, nourishing corn was their favorite food. And bet you one bowlful of new, improved post-toasties will make those honest Indian cornflakes your favorite cereal, too. Packed with sweet kernel flavor, so crisp and fresh they won't mush up in milk. Post-toasties, the heap good cornflakes. Best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Post-toasties, heap good cornflakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Heap good corn flakes. Post toasties, heap good corn flakes. Yes, everybody's wild about post toasties, those fresh tasting corn flakes. So be a good Indian, Mom. Before your band hits the trail, fortify them with big breakfast bowlfuls of flavor packed post toasties. Heap good nourishment with sugar and cream. Post toasties, heap good corn flakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Heap good corn flakes. Post toasties, heap good corn flakes. While Dale hurries the boy to safety, Roy and Jonah start toward the cabin. Bullet at their heels. They bend low, taking cover as they find it. The men in the cabin have seen them. They fire. Roy's gun answers. They reach the front of the cabin. Drop the ground behind a boulder. Jonah, they can't hit you here. Yeah, we can't hit them neither. Well, keep firing. I'll sneak around back and see if I can get in. Uh, take bullet with you. No. His barking will keep their attention here. Roy crawls to another boulder. One on the left, ten feet away. While Jonah fires toward the cabin. Reaching the boulder, he's out of direct range. He gets to his feet. And bending low, skirts around the end of the cabin and runs toward the back. He reaches the back door. Reach for it! Look out, man! Rogers! The outlaws fire, but Roy is not hurt. Jonah, I'm inside! He calls to Jonah. Roy lunges at the nearest gunman, swinging hard. So hard, the man is lifted from his feet and dazed. This gives Roy a chance at the other outlaw. He throws a hard right to his jaw. The outlaw bounds back, recovers, and punches viciously at Roy's head. Roy ducks. The blow gances off, but he has stepped back and is directly in the path of the first outlaw. The man is coming up behind him. A chair raised. Charlie flashes the front door. Bullet rushes in, leaps for the outlaw behind Roy, grabs the upraised arm, and brings the man down. 
Roy strikes out at the second gunman. The man staggers, slumps to the floor. Get him off! Get him off! Bullet! That's enough! Stay there and guard him, boy. Uh, by jingles, Roy, I thought you was a goner for a minute. I thought so, too. I, I ain't seen so much excitement since Charlie Fisher's wife hit a bear with a wet mop one dark night, thinking it was Charlie just getting home late. Say, we better start traveling. We're staying, Jonah. Here? Let him get up, Bullet. Stand back, boy. Come on, you two. Yeah, the rest of the gang is on the way, Rogers. He'll take you. Get up. Now, you won't get away. Roy, did I understand you to say we was going to stay here? Sure. We'll hold our gang until the posse comes. They'll take the posse, too. Find something to tie them with. We'll put them out of the way so they won't be hurt when the shooting starts. Matt! I got loose of... Oh, you're here. Roy, he broke away from me. Shell! Matt, what'd you let him grab you for? I never guessed he was so strong. He just... Forget it, Dale. Uh, this young fellow needs a rub down with a razor strop. We'll just tie their hands, Jonah. We won't be able to stay here. We can't risk the boy getting hurt. This ain't a boy. It's a young civic cat. I know, but he's got time enough to change. He may even grow up to do some good in the world. Good? I've been all the good I want. My dad was good. He was good all the way through, but he didn't make enough money to buy us shoes. I'm with these fellows now. Make sure that knot's tied tight, Jonah. Yeah. We'll take care of Shell now. That's your name, isn't it? Watch it to you. I ask if your name was Shell. Don't tell him. It ain't his business. Well, by doggies, I'm tearing up a floorboard right now and hiding that little... Uh, Jonah, yeah? tend to your job. Oh, that ratted grasshopper. I ask you a question, fella. Yeah, my name's Shell. Shell Platt. What's your pal's name? Matt McCormick. Thanks. Just a couple of bad hombres, huh? And they'll cool off. That's fine, Jonah. Let's start them for town. Shell, you and Matt walk ahead toward the horses. Son, you... I'm walking with them. And don't call me son. Hey, you're a regular bandy rooster, aren't you? I'll show you before we're through. Come on here. I want you right by my side. Yeah, talking nice to him. I bet you if you look close enough, you'd find a little civvy cat with growing horns. Rogers, you still want to go outside? What? Yeah, I see. Coming down across the ridge. That's our gang. Shut the door, will you, Dale? You bet. Matt, you and Shell get down on the floor. Better rope their feet, Jonah. Mm-hmm. Young fella, there may be a lot of shooting here. I'll try to prevent it, but just in case I can't, you get under the bunk. They won't shoot me. This is my gang, Colonel. Do what I tell you. Yeah. How long before the posse will get here, I wonder, Roy? Well, that's hard to say. It better be soon, if you ask me. Well, we can hold them off for a while. Here they are, Matt. We'll be out of here before long. Hey, Matt, Shell, are you in the cabin? Don't answer. Dale, hand me that towel to the wash basin quick. This? Yeah. Matt, Shell, answer, you in there? Here. Roy, now's the time for bullets, not dish clothes. Almost, Jonah, but not quite. No. You ain't you ain't making a flag of truce. Shell, answer, or we'll come in shooting. Hold it a minute. Who's that talking? Hey, what's the idea of the white flag? It's important. That's good, Roy. Stolen. I'm not stolen. Important to who? You, all of you. Okay. We'll hold our fire exactly one minute. Step out where you can be seen. Oh, it's Rogers. I want to talk to you. I'll make it fast. We've got Shell and Matt, and we've also got a boy in here who says he belongs to you. His name Mark Bolin? I don't know. But I want to get him out of here before somebody starts shooting. I'll send him out to you, but I want you to promise first that you'll have a man take him over the ridge. Are you local, Rogers? That kid's not ours. We don't care anything about him. We don't care about anybody. Here's the way we feel. Boy, quick! I guess that answers my question. We're in for it now. There's snakes in the grass. Jonah, watch the back door and window. I'll cover the front. Dale? Put something over the boy. All right. The mattress on the bunk's good. Maybe you won't get hurt. Roy and Jonah take their places at the front and back of the cabin. Dale hurries to see that the boy is protected. The battle is on. For a while, it's intense. The outlaws try to force Roy to surrender. When they see this cannot be done, both parties hold their fire, shooting only occasionally. Roy to hold the outlaw gang where it is until the sheriff arrives with a posse. The outlaws to keep Roy pinned in the cabin until night when they'll have a better chance to sneak up, rescue Matt McCormick and Shell Platt. Sure getting tiresome. 
Keep your eyes open, Jonah. If you don't, they'll be up on the cabin before we know it. Yeah, and if they get in, we're sunk. Yeah, old Tin Star's taking his time about getting here. Roy, can I have some more cartridges? I... Yeah, I can give you a couple. Hey, are you short, too? I've got one gun fully loaded. Wow. How are you fixed, Jonah? Yeah, got two shells left, that's all. We'll save them. From now on, don't shoot unless you actually see a man trying to sneak up to the cabin. Then make the shot count. In a bad way, aren't you, Rogers? We'll get by. If you let me talk to him, maybe we could work out a deal. We don't make deals. Be easy on you. Turn us over to him and then let you go. You're staying here. What for? Why are you keeping us? We want the paper you took from Bob Noble. <laughs> Ain't that a laugh? That paper was burned within a minute after we took it. Hey, Roy, the whole line of them out back is sneaking up. Yeah, in front, too, Roy, as if a signal was given. You must realize we're out of ammunition. All right, let them have it. Fire all you've got. Surprise them and make them think we have plenty. Yeah, that sent them flying. They were sure scratching for the boulders then. They've got us now, Roy. In a few minutes, they'll try it again. Yeah, and we ain't even got anything to throw at them. Blackman, come on! Come on, boys! Shut him up! Come on! I'm going to roll back! You rattler! You black get pulled, can We haven't got a chance. We... Oh, look, Roy, on the ridge! Yeah, the sheriff and his posse. We won't have to hold out much longer. Everybody, I just rode up here to tell you about that great energy giving cereal, Grape Nuts Flakes. <laughs> yes, sir. You sure get plenty of solid energy from that good whole wheat in Grape Nuts Flakes. And you get it quick like, too. Why, just two minutes after you polish off a bowl full of Grape Nuts Flakes, your body starts a using their powerful whole wheat energy. And Wranglers, it happens every time you eat them. Because those scientists fellers proved Grape Nuts Flakes two minute energy. That's for sure. And say, you go for Grape Nuts Flakes Swell Sugar Roasted Flavor. It's just plum delicious. So ask your mom to get you Grape Nuts Flakes, the two-minute energy cereal, with Roy's picture right on the front of the box. For two-minute energy, what do we eat? Grape Nuts Flakes, oh boy, they'll retreat. Yes, the two-minute energy has what it takes. So rise and shine with Grape Nuts Flakes. Simmer down here. But keep those hands in the air. My posse knows what to do with the first man who lets them drop. Sheriff, I don't know when I've been so glad to see anybody as I was you fellas. That goes for me, too, double. And I'll bet even old Jonah will admit he was glad to see you, too. Even Jonah? Mm. Well, why not? Jonah's not sore at me, are you, Jonah? Well, now... If there's any hard feelings, it should be on my part, because... He yelled fire yesterday when there was no fire. <laughs> Is there anything else, Jonah? The poor cat. Guess not. Well, gentlemen, let's get started. There's a long walk ahead of us. Watch both ends of the line, boys. And the men are cold. Hey, it's a funny thing about the sheriff. He's never let on to us that he even knows Dorothy May. You big sneak. And we're closer to him than anyone else. Roy, come here a minute, will you? Uh, sure. Sure. Hard feelings is all on his side. What's the matter, Dale? Look here. Hey, what is this, young fella? You're not crying. Get away. You'll be all right. I haven't got anybody. I joined up with these fellows, waited on them, did chores, I... and they didn't even care if I died. They're the wrong kind of hombres, that's all. What's the right kind, then? My dad was with Maybe the there were some things about your dad that you didn't understand. Come on home and have supper with us. We'll talk about it. Hey, it ought to be easy to put a young fellow like you on the right road. Your dad's had bad luck, Merc. Tell you what, we'll invite him to Paradise Valley and find him a job. That's a promise. Ah, uh, Roy. Roy? Yeah? You know, this is the best evening I ever had. Where have you been? Well, I decided to take the bull by the horns, and I went to see Dorothy May and find out if she'd teach Merck here. 
And she will. Yeah. Hey, Merck, you start school Monday. Well, that's fine, Jonah. Yeah, it is, but, but that ain't all. Dorothy May was old pie to me. Yeah. Said it was all her fault that we had a spat. Yeah, on account of a headache. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, and quick as I told her that I had my book finished and a big offer from a publisher who wants to print it. A big offer? Uh, I didn't mean to let that slip. Well, go on. Well, just build myself up, you see, Roy. <laughs> just build myself up. <laughs> well, anyway, Dorothy May told me to bring over the last part and she would type it tomorrow. Yes, sir, I tell you, it was wonderful. She looked at me from under them long lashes. And smiled her fetch-me-a-sandwich smile. (laughs) And smiled her face, yeah. And I complimented her on how pretty she looked. Uh Uh-huh. Sort of, well, I tell you, David, sort of lost my reason. Yeah, I couldn't think of nothing else, so I told her what a, I say, I told her what a pretty neck she has. Jonah, you didn't. Yeah, yeah, and she sighed. Laugh and said, said it was not. And didn't I think it'd look better if she had something to hang on it? Oh, and I what? said, Yes, sir. And I said, Yes. And she said, Well, do you think you'd like to bring me a night case? And she said, Oh, my gracious. Oh, she's done it again. <laughs> Dale, I've been took. <laughs> Get a rope, what Dale. I'm going to halter this fella and keep him on a line from now on. He's not <laughs> safe running loose. <laughs> Folks, this is Roy Rogers saying to all of you from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails to you. Keep smiling on. 
Crusher Show is brought to you by Post Serials, each week at this same time, with the Whippoorwills, Forrest Lewis, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Rush production transcribed, directed by Tom Hargis, script by Ray Wilson, music by Milton Charles. Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Herb Butterfield, Bill Green, Joe Duvall, and Charles Seal. This is Art Ballinger speaking for P.O.S.T. Post Serials. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails to you. Keep smiling. About the clouds, if we're together, just sing a song and bring the sunny weather. Happy trails.